so hello world I say good morning but it's sort of pre-lunch and post-morning so um, I'm off to a place called Tilda Jogya and it is going to be a group ride I'm meeting some brothers from Lahore and um, I'll join them in a city called Sarai Alamgir I'm, uh, I'm not sure if I'm running late or they're running late I know they're running late but I've timed my exit so that I don't have to wait for very long at uh, Sarai Alamgir the route to Tilla Jogia is a tough one. It's up in the mountains, and so you need a bike that can tackle the terrain. The bike I'm riding is a Tekken 250, uh, though it's only 225cc um, picture on screen, and it will hopefully take me up there with ease. Well, that's the plan. That's my hope. Anyway, um, I'll stop here with my commentary and let you enjoy the route. I have this desire sometimes to overtake everything on the road. The majority of bikes in this country are 125cc. Some sit at 150, some at 70cc. But when you have a 225cc motorbike, it just feels like a super bike compared to everything else out there. <laughs> right folks, so I met up with a couple of people. They said that others have gone ahead to buy things from the bakery or a bakery so they have uh, grub food to enjoy uh, when we're camping for the night i've got some sandwiches and uh, i don't know what else i've got i've got something anyway so i'll just uh, enjoy that for now That should be good for me. As you can see, it's just hectic, you know. When you're on a bike and you've got all the... Uh, so this truck wants to overtake the rickshaw, uh, but he can't go too far out because there's another truck and it's a bigger truck. But I'm just going to give him a nice little horn to tell him that I'm here. Please don't ignore me and uh, let's carry on. Please excuse the way I ride, but sometimes where people don't follow the rules, you have to ride as if there are no rules. The Grand Trunk Road that goes from Karachi all the way to Calcutta, made by Sheikh Shah Suri some two, three hundred years ago. Anyway, um, we'll leave the main road to take a little side road and head towards Rotas Gila and then on to Dilla Jogia. So I'm probably one of the oldest people in this group and I found that all the young buckaroos were just overtaking me. So what I've done is I've just gone into full sports mode and overtaken everyone. I'm here on my own. Eventually they all catch up. But sometimes we old fools have to prove that we still have some energy, some dynamic thing in us that makes us feel that we can run with you young buckaroos. <laughs>
Though the tarmac road is broken, I know further along it turns into a sand track, um, a dirt track, and I thought I'd get ahead uh, and then wait for the group behind. I don't want to take pole position all the way. It just looks funny when an outsider takes the lead uh, in a country which belongs to the insiders. I promise I wanted to stay behind the other bikers, but there was an urge deep inside me to push ahead. To be honest, I've probably got the more powerful of the bikes in this pack, and this is only 225cc, so it's not that powerful. But as a great off-road bike, this does seem to take this track in its stride. So I thought I'd push on. Um, they're coming back in the rear uh, slowly, but I can take a little more speed and try to get to the top as quick as I can so I can record with an unhindered lens uh, the um, peak and the temples that sit on top of Dilla Jogi. That's the plan and I've committed to it. <laughs> I don't normally do selfies and I apologize because this is breaking a rule that I set but there's a sense of achievement that I wanted to share and part of that sharing is showing you my disheveled broken face the rest of my body is also broken but we'll just stick to the face for now now I'm going to turn the video around and show you the view yes it's a view of a rock but wait a second let's see what's beyond the rock it's this. Now I would love to say that is cloud, the mist that you see, but I believe it's pollution. And there are little tiny reservoirs of water, uh, probably collected from rain, which uh, the animals drink from. And I've seen many uh, a camel here so that's the view that is the view I'm trying to look for Rotas Kila and I can't find it but it's somewhere down there somewhere at the bottom of the valley so folks this is Dilla Jogi and I feel a little like a Jogi on my feet let's walk forward not too forward because this is the edge and that's the valley down there. It's a steep drop. And what I do to try to bring you a view worth a thousand words. And it'll have to be because right now getting out a few words is difficult enough. So this is the other side of the mountain, another valley. A vast valley, if you can even call it a valley. 
a dancing camel overlooking a fantastic view. More of the view. Obviously, we say hello to our steed. Hello, steed. Thank you for bringing me here. And then these are the tents. Mine's the one in the red. Disheveled like me. And then I've added drone footage of the temples up there. Can you imagine water being in this little man-made pond, lake, whatever you want to call it? It would have been a spectacular view and a great place to cool oneself. The steps, I think, were for people to walk down into the water. Uh, go as deep as you feel brave. But now it's left in ruins. Like so many things in Pakistan, which have a history that would promote Pakistan in so many ways. Unfortunately, they're left for people to abuse, unfortunately through graffiti, through rubbish. Um, it's just a shame. But I know in time to come, there will be an awakening. And I feel that people of Pakistan, the youth of today, the youth of tomorrow will bring back the former glory of some of the historical sites in Pakistan. And there are so many, so many. Continuing on our journey, I think through imagination, and through looking at the remnants, you have to be very careful here, rocks galore. Uh, this would have been a very impressive complex when it was intact. Now it's just ruins and there are two schools of thought. One is you can never get the original back and therefore just retaining the ruins is something one should do and the other school of thought is rebuild with whatever you have now that resembles what they used back then and bring it back to its former glory now in my country the uk britain they do not restore they keep intact what is and that's fine but in places like France and uh, other places in Europe, they actually, what a view, they actually restore. And I prefer the restoration uh, process because, put simply, um, if you can get it to look very close to what it was, then I think you can't go wrong. We can't, we can't get it back to its original state because that's, that's gone now. But, you know, it's, it helps the imagination if you can get something that's close to. Dilla Jogia, a very beautiful and historic place found in Pakistan in the district of Jela. Indeed, it boasts the oldest religious institution of Hinduism pre-independence 1947 India. Very important to Sikhs because Guru Nanak stayed here and of course very important to Hindus because it is essentially a Hindu complex. Surrounded by a vast valley 360 degrees and perched on top of a mountain that gives you great views and is both difficult to reach but in the same breath, a great challenge, one I took on.
tough ride to Tilla Jogia, and then the night camped in a very small tent, followed by the morning after. It was time to head back down. And that journey I wasn't looking forward to. The journey there was tough, but going downhill, down, 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 over such rough terrain, really tested the body all over again. And considering I hadn't recovered from the journey up, I was extremely sore. Young buckaroos were nowhere to be seen. They wanted to stay on, but I wanted to get back home. The truth is that prior to this journey, I had covered 2,000 kilometers in five days in the coldest of terrain in the toughest and highest of mountains, the Karakoram Range. And I was ready to have some respite. So homeward bound, that's the direction I took. There is magic to be seen, there are journeys to be had, there are places that once you visit, it leaves a mark on your soul. This was a journey I would never forget, not only because of the great terrain and the wonderful friends I met and stayed overnight with, but just because it was pure magic. <laughs>